Welcome to class number 13, which deals with removing and replacing an overpass. This is a continuation from class number 12, which showed the initial construction activities which were terminated early. This is the follow-on contract which completed the construction of the bridge. You will recall that there was ample space here to shift all of the traffic to one side or another while the other side was removed and replaced. That's the traditional approach and eventually that's what was done here. It was determined that the bridge here was really too long and the span could be shortened. That presented the opportunity to build the new abutments inboard of the existing abutments and that construction could be completed without any interference to the public only after the abutments were built as far as they could be built then and only then would the traffic be shifted and half the bridge would be removed. It was an innovative approach but it seemed to contribute to some problems. The north abutment was built as far as it could be built and that went along very smoothly but when activity shifted to the south abutment and the location of the south abutment is pretty much where the auger is parked you can see it's very close to the temporary tower and it requires an excavation at least uh, 10 feet deep the sheeting that was called for here was soldier piles and lagging and the auger has begun pre-drilling for the soldier piles. The line of sheeting passes uh, very close to and in fact passes slightly underneath the existing tower. Soldier piles and lagging cannot accommodate a concentrated load like that. I'm not sure there's any supportive excavation technique that could accommodate that kind of concentrated load. And when this became apparent, construction activity stopped and eventually the contract was terminated. There must have been many more issues which uh, I'm not aware of which contributed to the early termination of the contract, but this seemed to be one of the triggers. When construction finally resumed with a new contractor, the very first activity were installing drill piles to resupport the existing tower. The name on the drill rig here is Schnabel, and he is a foundation contractor, and I wanted to give uh, recognition to his name because he both designed and installed the supportive excavation system. They did not use soldier piles and lagging. That would have been very difficult to install underneath the existing structure. The method they used is somewhat unusual, but it seemed perfectly suited to the situation that was present here. Here the drilled-in piles have been installed and they are attached to the existing footing by means of a bracket. The footing is now being carried by six drilled piles and those piles reach an elevation far below the excavation required for the new abutment. That tower has now been underpinned and is perfectly safe for the excavation to begin and it has started here. The system used here will be soil nails and shotcrete and you can see some of the elements in this photo there's a filter fabric that will be behind the shotcrete in order to prevent any accumulation of water. I also want to point out that the line of excavation is now several feet away from the existing foundation. The soldier piles and lagging, the way they were laid out, they would be right alongside the face 
of that temporary footing. The shotcrete is being installed right at the neat line of the permanent footing. Now you could have done that with the soldier piles and lagging also, but that still would not have made that temporary tower safe. However, it was done here with the shotcrete application and the new abutment footing will be poured hard up against the shotcrete. Here you can see the fabric. There's also a layer of uh, rolled out uh, mesh which will support the shotcrete. And there is some rebar in a pattern which uh, resembles a whaler so that the loads can be carried by the soil nails. Uh, these uh, dowels are not the soil nails, but they are markers to indicate the location of the soil nail. Once you shotcrete this, uh, all of these elements would be hidden. The shotcrete is reinforced. I don't mean the rollout mesh, but I mean the shotcrete mixture itself is reinforced by means of these small wires. The wires here are joined together the way staples are attached in your stapling machine. But when they're agitated in the mixer, they come apart into separate wires and they're mixed throughout the applied shotcrete. I also have a short video here showing the shotcrete application. Here the concrete truck is delivering concrete. It's Placing it in that hopper where it will be pumped under pressure and then sprayed onto the face of the excavation. The man doing the spraying is called a nozzle man. This is a very skilled role. If he just sprayed the uh, exposed uh, earth, the earth would probably just fall away. So he has to develop a feeling for the material figure out just uh, how hard you can spray this without losing material. It requires a lot of skill and practice and I'm sure each installation is different and different kind of a challenge to the nozzle man. Now you typically apply four inches but you cannot do that all at once because it simply won't stand a thickness of four inches. In, in this application I would say he's basically putting down an inch or two in an initial pass and then he's going to come back and apply the final pass. You can see this is applied in lifts perhaps about three feet at a time so you cannot really leave too much of this exposed earth feet looks like about the limit. I think, again, that would depend on the material. This is very dry material, very little cohesion, so you can only go down, I would say, about three feet before you have to apply the shot creep and the soil nails. Now he's reached the end, and he's going to build up the thickness of the shot creep and apply the full four inch thickness. Now in this instance, because it's a supportive excavation wall, you don't care much about the finish, so he can leave the shot creep just uh, as it is. But in some instances, you can actually follow him with the trowel and even off the shotcrete if for whatever reason you need a uh, smoother finish. After the shotcrete is hardened, he will install the next row of soil nails.